So this one's kind of, this one's sad. I'm like, I try not to be funny during this. But it is really sad. Um, so Disney is testing out a, a new legal theory. It's trying to use the terms of service for its streaming service as legal cover for something that happened at Disney World in Florida. So what's the nature of this lawsuit? So this is being brought by Jeffrey Piccolo. Um, what happened was Jeffrey Piccolo and his wife, Dr. Uh, Kanakporn Tangson, um, I'm sorry for bittering that, um, along with along with his mother, uh, they, were, they were on a trip to Disney World. Um, and the incident happened, uh, they went to the Disney Springs restaurant, Raglan Road, in October of 2023, which is kind of spooky because actually me and my fiance Viviana were there in September of 2023. In any case, notably, so if you don't know anything about Disney World or Disney Springs, so Disney Springs is a publicly open, almost like a shopping outlet, right? It's on the Disney World property, but it's not like the parks where you have to buy admission into the park, right? You could just, if you just live in Orlando, you can just drive up to Disney Springs Park in the parking lot and go to one of these stores or restaurants, right? Uh, and notably, the restaurant, unlike a restaurant that might be in in the park, in Magic Kingdom or Epcot or whatever, Notably, Raglan Road is not owned or operated by Disney, right? It's like a shopping center where it'd be like a mall and you have a restaurant in the mall. The space is just being leased um, by uh, the company Great Irish Pubs Florida Incorporated. Raglan Road is like a Irish pub kind of place, right? Um, and when they went to the restaurant, uh, Piccolo and Tang Son, I'm just going to use the last names for now, um, they notify the staff of her food allergies, of his wife's food allergies. Um, they were reassured multiple times by the restaurant that the meal would not contain any of the allergens. I think it's for her. It was, it was bear, uh, not berries, dairy and nuts. Um, and the Verge notes that the couple chose this restaurant specifically because it advertised, um, that, you know, accommodating food allergies was like a top priority for the restaurant. So they, they, they specifically went there because they thought it would be safe for them. Um, sure enough, they ate their meal. They, they went. They, uh, I think I think Piccolo went back to the hotel room and Tong Song and, and Piccolo's mother went shopping in Disney Springs. About 45 minutes later, after the meal, uh, Tang Song started having an allergic reaction, administered an EpiPen, because she was a doctor, um, administered an own EpiPen, went to the hospital, and unfortunately she ended up dying um, from this. And the medical examiner found the cause of death to be, quote, anaphylaxis due to elevated levels of dairy and nut in her system, end quote. So, what does that mean? It means that, that the food she ate did, in fact, have the allergens that she was made very clear needed to not be there and was assured multiple times that would not be there. So Piccolo, um, in his grief, has filed a wrongful death suit. Um, and the suit, the lawsuit, is against both Great Irish Pubs Florida and Disney Parks. I think Walt Disney Parks and Resort. It's like the official name of the company. Uh, he's seeking an excess of $50,000. IndieWire notes that this is just the legal threshold required to bring a case in circuit court. So he's really, he's literally just asking for the bare minimum. Um, where I feel like you could ask for way more in a situation like this. But he's basically just asking for the minimum required in order to even bring a case. Like you can't just sue someone for a dollar, I guess, right? Um, his attorney, Brian Denny, said, quote, Mr. Piccolo's damages claimed are far greater than $50,000 for the loss of his beloved wife and partner, end quote. So this is a really, really sad situation. So what's Disney's response? Disney is seeking arbitration, right? Instead of a jury trial. So if you don't know, arbitration is basically, it would be settled out of court um, by a party. And essentially whoever gets to decide, it would be binding. It would be legally binding. Um, as opposed to having it in front of a jury or a judge. Um, the, the statement from Disney um, you know, cause, cause why are they arguing that not only do we want arbitration, it legally actually has to be arbitration. And here's the reason. And here's the reason Disney gives quote, Piccolo completed the registration web form, uh, by providing personal information, including his email address and create a password before registering the account, Piccolo had to select agree and continue immediately above was a disclosure notifying Piccolo that quote, by clicking agree and continue, you could, you agree to our subscriber agreement. Piccolo then selected agree and continue. So essentially, Disney's trying to argue that since Piccolo signed up for a free trial of Disney Plus in November of 2019, he cannot sue because per the terms of, per, you know, the agreement that you, you know, when you scroll down 800 pages to click accept, 
it said that all disputes, um, you know, would have to be resolved with binding arbitration, right? And this is a quote from the Disney Plus subscriber agreement. Quote, there may be instances in which disputes arise between us. You, on the one hand, at Disney Plus and or ESPN Plus, on the other hand, agree to resolve by binding individual arbitration all disputes, including any related disputes involving the Walt Disney Company or its affiliates, end quote. So their argument is, well, you agreed to arbitration when you sign up for Disney Plus, and it says for any for Walt Disney Company and any of its affiliates, so in this case, with your wife dying at a restaurant on our property, uh, sorry, our hands are tied. You signed this agreement. It, it's just not going over well. Um, Disney did say, they continued their, their formal statement saying, quote, we are deeply saddened by the family's loss and understand their grief. Given that this restaurant is neither owned nor operated by Disney, we are merely defending ourselves against the plaintiff's, plaintiff's attorney's attempt to include us in their lawsuit against the restaurant. Um, you know, I, to be, here's the thing about this. To be fair, uh, they also claim he agreed to arbitration when purchasing Disney World tickets, right? When they bought tickets to go to the parks in their hotel. But to play devil's advocate, this restaurant isn't part of the theme park ticket, right? It's its own thing. You don't need a ticket to go to Disney Springs, right? So this sets a very dangerous precedent, um, or, or rather, it, it will or could if this ends up being successful. Which, frankly, just spoiler alert, I don't think this is going to hold up in, in court. But if it were to, this would be a very dangerous precedent, right? Because lengthy terms of service agreements are already dubious. It's already been something that has been written about extensively about how companies will hide little provisions in there. Because they know people won't read it or won't read it carefully. Um, because... Um, you know, usually when you're doing one of these, it's not before a big decision. You're literally just signing up to use like Twitter or, you know, Disney Plus. Um, so it's not something that requires, I need to home over, I need to give my, I need to give this agreement to my lawyer, make sure I'm not agreeing to anything I don't want. You know, it's designed to hide key provisions from consumers who are just lo looking to use a service. Um, it's not an accident. It's designed to be wordy and long um, and almost incomprehensible um, so that you don't actually find out what's, um, you know, what's actually in it. John Davison, who's the director of litigation at the Electronic Privacy Information Center, said, quote, such agreements which customers quickly consent to by clicking I agree when downloading an app or a streaming service are so stacked against the consumer that it's often difficult to offer good legal advice. The consumer is presented with this contract and really doesn't have an opportunity to negotiate the terms. It's a yes or no, end quote. And I think that is a really key part here is that it's not like you can be like, well, I don't like this provision and then negotiate with lawyers. It's kind of just... If you want to use this service, you have to agree to these terms. Um, and Piccolo's lawyers argue that Disney put the link to the terms within another link on the agreement page so that it was intentionally designed to be obfuscated, right? It was intentionally separate so that there's less of a chance that someone will read it and then actually go, hmm, I'm not sure if I want to agree to that. Um, and again, even if, even if, um, you know, this was even plausible, Right? Like, like, forget all the issues with these long, long uh, terms of service for these companies, right? Um, surely this exceeds reasonable assumptions of what is in the agreement, right? Because this has nothing to do with Disney+. Plus. Um, and furthermore, it doesn't even necessarily apply to his wife. Because Piccolo is the one who signed up for Disney+, Plus, but he is suing on behalf of the estate of his, of his late wife. Right? Um, so it doesn't even have anything to do... So technically, this has should have nothing to do with this because she did not sign up for this account. Right? Um, and we have a quote here, again, from from the lawyer saying, quote... Uh, or rather, I think it's from... Um, uh, what did, who did I say? John Davison, who's the, you know, the director of litigation at the Electronic Privacy Information Center, saying, quote, in effect, WDPR, Walt Disney Parks and Resort, is explicitly seeking to bar its 150 million Disney Plus subscribers from ever prosecuting a wrongful death case against it in front of a jury, even if the case facts have nothing to do with Disney Plus, end quote. And again, it's an untested legal theory. Now, all of this being said, I don't think Disney is at fault here at all um, for this death. Because, again, they do not own or operate this agreement. Um, excuse me, they don't, they don't own or operate this restaurant. 
Um, so it would be it's 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 really more of like a tenant landlord relationship. Um, their their defense against it is reprehensible. This Disney Plus thing, but I agree with them on a certain level that they they're, they're not really at legal fault here or moral fault because again it's not operated by them. Um, and this may be Piccolo or his lawyer's attempt to go after a wealthier defendant. Um, if there is an intention to get be because you can seek fifty thousand in damages. But the court can award you way more, right? The jury and the judge can decide to award you way more than what you're asking for. So perhaps this is their attempt to go after someone who has way deeper pockets than, what was it, the great Irish pubs of Florida, whatever the company was, right? Um, but we're going to see what the defense of this case is because the hearing is scheduled for October 2nd, so about a month and a half from now. Um, but again, this is a really sad situation. Um and everyone is, uh, everyone's just dunking on Disney. Every outlet possible is, you know, saying this is literally the most dystopian thing ever. That basically by agreeing to watch, just be able to watch The Mandalorian, I agree to never sue Disney, even if they do something awful. Which I don't think they did here. But they're arguing, okay, what if this did happen in the park? They would say, well, I mean, you did sign the, the release, so uh, sorry. Uh, we have a question here from Viviana. Hello. Uh, says, is the term for life, how could Disney make that claim, claim five years later? That's a great question. I do not know. I think it's in perpetuity. I think it's, um, you know, uh, well, this is an interesting question because, again, I don't even think he continued with Disney+. Plus. So is is the terms of service only applicable during the duration of, a, of the subscription? I don't know. That's a really interesting question. But my understanding is that it would be in perpetuity. Because no, everyone's dunking on Disney for this, but no one is trying to say this is dumb because it's expired, right? Everyone's saying this is dumb because this has nothing to do with Disney Plus. Um, so I would imagine if if there was a case of it, it's it expired agreement, um, that people would be saying that left, right, and center. So um, again, it's just a really sad turn of events um, that you you book this vacation to go to the the quote unquote happiest place on earth with your wife and mother. Um, and, and this happens. So it's just really disappointing to see. And Disney could have been a little more sensitive or a little more... Like, just pay the 50 000, Just settle with them. Just settle and be done with it. But they don't want to set a oppositely dangerous precedent of anyone can sue them for anything. But again, this is a very worthwhile lawsuit. Like, they made it very clear to the wait staff that they had these allergies. And, you know, um, it's just really unfortunate what happened.